Hey y'all, today I'm going to talk a little bit about Motown legend Mary Wells, who was such an inspiration. And if you like these types of stories, please subscribe. Mary Wells was born in May 1943 in Detroit. She was one of three children. She had spinal meningitis at two years old. She was also partially blind. She had deafness in one ear and temporary paralysis. When she was 10 years old, she contracted tuberculosis. During her early years, she lived in Black Bottom, where she struggled with being in poverty. At 12 years old, she was helping her mother with house cleaning work. Mary used to give herself comfort by singing. She sang in church choirs, and by age 10, she was performing at local nightclubs in the Detroit area. She graduated from Detroit's Northwestern High School at 17 years old. She intended to become a scientist, but after hearing about the success of Detroit musicians like Jackie Wilson and the Miracles, she decided to try music as a, as a singer and songwriter. So back in 1960, when she was 17 years old, she approached Barry Gordy at Detroit's 20 Grand Club with a song she had intended for Jackie Wilson to record, since she knew Barry had collaborated with Jackie. Allegedly, Barry Gordy was tired, so he insisted that Mary Wells sing the song in front of him. He was impressed with her performance, so Barry had Mary enter Detroit's United Sound Systems to record the, the single titled Bye Bye Baby. Allegedly, after 22 takes, Gordy signed Mary to the Motown subsidiary of his expanding record label and released the song as a single in September 1960. It went to number eight on the U.S. Billboard R&B chart in 1961 and number 45 on the Pop Singles chart. Mary Wells said in an interview on the Bay Area Local Show that she had her most ultimate feeling hearing Bye Bye Baby on the radio her very first record. She said she didn't think she would ever have that feeling again. She said she was poor as poor could get, then all of a sudden she was on the radio. She said the record played in Detroit for a year and a half, and at the time she didn't know that Motown was a small label. She said she was the only artist on Motown for a year and a half, so she thought she was on a rinky-dinky label a rinky-dink label, because Tamla was the label and nobody heard of Motown. She said after a year and a half, the company became so huge. Mary Wells had a number of hit singles composed mainly by Smokey Robinson. There were songs from 1962 like The One Who Really Loves You, Two Lovers, You Beat Me to the Punch, which got a Grammy nomination. Then there was her signature hit song, My Guy, in 1964. Mary was very talented, and I don't think you can go wrong working with Smokey Robinson. He was an amazing singer and songwriter. Mary Wells became recognized as the queen of Motown until she departed. The Beatles said Mary Wells was their favorite American singer. Mary Wells got married to Herman Griffin in 1960 at 17 years old. Allegedly, he used to be a backup singer and her chaperone. Then they developed a relationship and got married. The relationship was not a healthy one. He was allegedly controlling of Mary Wells. They divorced in 1963. Even though they were divorced... Herman Griffin allegedly talked Mary Wells into leaving Motown at the height of her success. Mary had problems with Motown over her original recording contract that she signed when she was under 18 years old. She was allegedly also upset that the money from her song My Guy was being used to promote the Supremes. Allegedly, Barry Gordy attempted to renegotiate her contract but she still wanted to be free from her contract with Motown. There was a lawsuit. Mary fought to gain a larger share of the royalties she had earned during her tenure with Motown. Mary invoked a clause that allowed her to leave the label 
advising the court that her original contract was invalid, as she had signed while she was still a minor. Mary won her lawsuit and was awarded a settlement, leaving Motown officially in 1965. She accepted a $200,000 contract with 20th Century Fox Records. Allegedly, part of the terms of the, the agreement of her release was that she could not receive any royalties from her past works with the label, including use of her likeness to promote herself. Mary worked on material for her new record label while dealing with different issues, including being bedridden for weeks, suffering from tuberculosis. She went through a lot of stuff. Mary's eponymous first 20th century Fox release included the first single, Ain't It the Truth? Its B-side was Stop Taking Me for Granted, Use Your Head and Never Leave Me. That album did not do well. Mary did not have the same success she had as when she was with Motown. In 1966, Mary Wells signed with Atlantic Records subsidiary Atco. She scored her final top 10 R&B hit with Dear Lover. In 1968, she left that label for Jubilee Records, where she scored her final pop hit called The Doctor. That's a song she co-wrote with her then-husband, Cecil Womack, Bobby Womack's brother. Mary married Cecil Womack in 1966. Mary and Cecil Womack had three children together. Mary later started having an affair with Cecil's, Cecil's brother, Curtis Womack, which lasted for over a decade. There is a book about Mary Wells called The Tumultuous Life of Motown's First Superstar. You guys should give it a read. Allegedly, Mary felt so much guilt around the affair that she attempted suicide in 1977. In 1977, she divorced Cecil Womack and moved in with Curtis Womack. Mary and Curtis also had a daughter together named Sugar. Beautiful daughter. I noticed that Google says she was married twice, but I saw an interview with Mary Wells on the Joan Rivers show where she said she was divorced three times. She also had her beautiful little daughter, Sugar, on that show, and she said that she was divorced from Sugar's father. So that leads me to believe she was previously married to Curtis. It seems Mary Wells went through a lot in her life. It was in the book that she did drugs for relief, and she stopped doing drugs when she was pregnant with her daughter, Sugar. She successfully completed a drug rehab program in 1990. Allegedly, that's the same year she found out she had cancer of the larynx, which later spread to the lungs. The disease affected her voice. She didn't have her normal voice. Her voice became more like a whisper to me. She said in an interview how much she missed her voice dearly and was praying it would come back. She said she put a lot of time in her career and she had been singing all her life and she doesn't have another trade. I love Mary Wells. She's really a legend. She remained optimistic though. She said in an interview that she looks at the best things that's happening in her life and tells the devil to get behind her and let the Lord in front of her. I'm glad a number of singers came to her aid in her time of need. Mary did not survive her illness. Her cancer returned in 1992. She allegedly had pneumonia. She was hospitalized at the Kenneth Norris Jr. Cancer Hospital. She died on July 26, 1992, at only 49 years old. Her longtime friend, Smokey Robinson, gave a eulogy at her funeral. He also sang her song, My Guy. Mary was cremated and her ashes was laid in Glendale Forest Lawn Memorial Park in a Womack family crypt. Sam Cooke was also buried close by in the Garden of Honor, about 850 feet to the west. Mary Wells was a beautiful legend. Her music will never die. Rest in peace, Sister Mary.